Last thing that I really want to ask you about, and you've already mentioned this already, but what advice would you give someone starting out in ministry like me? I'm pretty new into the ministry thing. I published my book in 2019. Obviously, COVID came in 2020, knocked us off our socks, like knocked the socks off a little bit, knocked us off of our plans. And so now we're getting back into it. What would you say to me or to someone else who is starting out in ministry? Because you've been doing this for a while and you have your own little pattern. So what would you say? Yeah. Man, I say the first thing is this. Um, I, I say this to our team all the time. None of us are here to serve a person. We're serving a mission and a savior. That's what's going on. And I think oftentimes, like, the reason why it's so difficult for us to build teams to release control of the things that we have created is because we actually think that we that they're ours, mm-hmm. that that broken crayons is, is mine, that overcomer the devotional is mine, and mm-hmm. this space is mine. And when really we're just stewarding over ideas that God has planted in us, our minds and our bodies and our souls, they don't function without God. And so best believe that everything that you are creating into the world comes from a source and it's not you. It is not by your power. It's not by your talent. It's not by your gifting It is what God has allowed you to create so that he can allow you to steward it. And I think with that in mind, that's when you're able to release control over things mm-hmm. and figure out who's actually the right person that I can put in the right place in the right timing for this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things, it's a quick example, one of the things that everyone was confused about is when my husband started the church, I decided not to be like the co-lead pastor. Mm-hmm. And what that meant simply was I still preach on Sundays. I still mother the church. But what that simply meant was one of the things that came with that was leading the women's ministry. Well, I already got a women's ministry. And just imagine Tony Collier deciding that I'm going to lead two international women's ministries. I'm going to make it pop. Well, now in that place, there's five women who are leading the church's women's ministry. Think about the giftings and the creativity and what the God's fresh breath that's on their life that I would have consumed because Mm -hmm. this is mine. And so that's just an example of that. I think the second thing that maybe has really like pushed us far or or further faster is we always say we do not want to get ahead of God. I'm not rushing anything. It don't matter. We are slow to hire, quick to fire. We are not releasing something because we just got a random idea. We're all going to run by it. We're a very flat organization. That's how I lead, very flat, meaning there's not a lot of hierarchy. There's not a lot of, Tony says this, we're going this way. Right. It's, hey guys, I had this idea. I think I'm hearing from the Lord. Not too sure, a little nervous, not sure. Let me get your thoughts. Well, if I have an idea and the six women that are that, that are actually gifted to do this with me are like, no, nah, I don't think that's us. Who are we going to trust, me? Or the synergy and unity of the Holy Spirit? Right. Or what's on the inside of them? Because if we're all following and pursuing God in deep relationship, if we are all after the same thing, which is to help women process through brokenness and get on the other side to hope, then there should be some synergy. There should never be a person that's just like, oh, well, that idea really sucked. Mm-hmm. And it's just, okay, well, we're going to do it anyway. So that's really big for us. We do not get ahead of God. We're a very flat organization. We It, it just is what it is. Um, I would also say one of the things that's hard about being a leader, and especially in this celebrity culture, this day and age, is that people want to idolize you. They just want, it's, it's naturally there. It is, people view other humans who have a great story and have been through a whole bunch of stuff as this like representative of God. Mm -hmm. And the truth is God is the only one that can fill you. Idols numb you. Mm -hmm. That's a temporary fix of people. And what happens is with cancel culture is that people create these expectations on leaders and ministers and whatever in their mind. They put them on the pedestals, the very pedestals that they want to take them off of when they don't meet the expectation that they've set. Mm -hmm. And that is both society and it's also the responsibility of the leader. I don't, if someone asks me to get something for me, I'm like, if I can get it myself, I will get it. And my father has always said that. When I took my dad on my first like speaking trip, he's like, this girl just keep coming and just ask me if I need something. Like I can't walk. I hate country and he a little wild. But he's like, like back up. Like I'm a man, like (laughs) I'm a man, I can walk. 
you know, for him, it's like, it's about age, it's about gender, all these things. But he taught me something so valuable. He said, listen to me, if you can do something for yourself, you better do it. You better do it. Don't let these people, as he said, don't let these people be out here getting you water and you know how to get your own water. Don't let these people be out here. Oh, let me give you your privacy. He said, this, this ain't your stage. This is God's stage. You don't get no privacy here. And it's his country and aggressive way of saying, don't get too big now. Like, get fine. Get up on a pedestal if you want to see how, how far you fall and how bad it hurts. We as leaders have to press in. We as leaders, when someone comes up to me after I preach and they're like, I just, oh my God, you're so amazing. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm so glad that God showed up for you in that way. This is why we talk about brokenness. This is why we talk about our mess. This is why we are open about the things that we're battling with. Because when people look at me, they have to see God. They have to. They cannot see this girl who's got whatever. I don't even know. They can't see that. But I have to be mature enough, secure enough, and humble enough to say, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not me as God. Right. You need to know who actually impacted you in this service today. And it was not me. Because my gifts and talents, they come from God. And trust me, I'm ratchet, sis. I got temptations. I can't even be in the same room with my brother because next thing you know, I'm rolling up. We smoking weed. I've got, I'm, I don't like, don't do this. Don't put us on pedestals. And so as a leader, you have to take yourself off of the pedestals that people will put you on over and over and over and over again. Like it is, it's just real and it's raw and it is what it is. Yeah. Um, and the last thing I would say is this, man, like, Get that quick fix out of your mind. Mm -hmm. I had a, a friend of mine that um, went and sat with uh, Bill Hybels and Laura, I forgot his name that fast. Um, one of these, uh, Rick Warren, that's who it was. And he said, what are you afraid for with the next generation? Like with us preachers, leaders, mm -hmm. he said that y'all would get to, y'all would get success too fast. Wow. That he said, y'all because of how viral everything goes because of da, da 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 you want success so bad that the ordinary seems wrong wow and jesus does his best work in the ordinary in the villages and the caves where people can't even talk about jesus in china in the middle east god does his best work in the ordinary God does his best work in your house. God does his best work in your family, in your friends, not on your social media timelines, but face to face, hand in hand, heart to heart. God does his best work in the ordinary. Don't forget about the ordinary. It is your best place. My most transformative ministry happens, first of all, in my daughter who has so many behavioral issues and we see transformation because I'm close. It happens in our course groups with 50 women who nobody knows. You don't know their names, you don't know where they live, they don't have a blog, they don't have an Instagram. 50 women who's entrusted us to hold their stories so deeply and tenderly. And we get to walk with them and see a woman say, I don't deserve to live. And three months down the line, I want nothing more than to live and to be with Jesus in this world. Like, you, the world will try to get you to miss that. Mm -hmm. The ordinary, the beautiful hearts of Jesus, the sons and daughters, and we miss it. And it's, it's just, it's, it's heartbreaking to think that there's more value on stages and platforms than there is in the hearts of God's sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. That's where the glory is. And don't forget that. Don't forget it. That's it. So good. First of all, preaching already. Like that is just amazing. Honestly, you should have had pen and paper, but I was just like trying okay. to stick it in as best as I could. Hey, I watched this later and take notes. Don't worry. Good. <laughs> so yeah. good. Honestly, listening to what you said is uh, a game changer for me. It is a shape shifter for me. It, it changes perspective and heart posture and just being someone who is starting out right and in the world in a social media um obsessed world really because mm -hmm. my generation is the first one 
to be completely submerged in social media. And so we are finding the highs and the lows of it, the wrongs and the rights of it. And it's just this balance and different stuff. But I just love what you said of um, don't miss the here, don't miss the people that you get to talk to in your family and your friend group more than uh, posting about Jesus, like spend time with Jesus, spend time with people who love Jesus too, that's around you and speak life into them. And I think your message and just answering my question is be here. And my mother says this, she's like, don't forget where you came from. Like she has said that to us because anytime the Lord does anything, my parents are number one to give the Lord credit. And my sister and I see that and we are implementing that as well. If anyone's like, oh, you did well, it's like, praise God, you know? And it's something that I know for me, I'm learning to do, right? I'm not I haven't excelled out it, at it, but I'm intentional to do it. So I think what you're sharing is just be intentional, right? Just keep going, keep trying, keep believing, keep sowing, and the Lord is going to transform you. Just like what you're doing with the women, you're telling them, I'm with you, the Lord's here, you can find freedom. It's this step-by-step yeah. intentional thing, even if you don't feel it in the moment. And the Father's like, transformation comes out of your intentional steps to trust me and to seek me and all these different things. So what you've shared is absolutely convicting to me and just a game changer, but it's so good because this is going to be the steps that I will be able to remain here and to see here and to love here. And the same for anybody that's listening and watching. It's never good to be called out. It's never good to share sometimes your stuff, but there is freedom in it. So um, yes, this was definitely convicting, correcting, challenging, all the things, but so, so good. So thank you for sharing that with me and with us. Um, that is all the questions that I have for you, but is there anything else on your heart that you would want to say to anybody that's listening or watching, if anything comes to mind, but I think you've shared so many good things. I feel great. I'm like, yeah, we got it. We got it. You write your notes. You're doing great guys. Yeah. For sure. God is good, man. That's it. (laughs) Well, so good. I am absolutely grateful to have a conversation with you and just to hear what the Lord is doing in your life, where he's brought you from and just the encouragement that he is bringing out of you and to other people's hearts and ears. And so thank you for uh, just being obedient to the Lord and allowing him to take your mess and make messages out of it and just being used by him and um, how you're leading is by how you're serving. And it is just so cool to see how you are serving the Lord and the people around you. And that is true leadership, right? So it's so good to have a conversation with you. But before I let you go and I let you guys go, do you mind praying us out, Tony? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's pray. Woo. Um, gosh, God, we just acknowledge um, you in all of your divine triune way. Um, we acknowledge God, the father, the creator of the universe of the earth and the moon and the stars. And then us, we acknowledge the Holy Spirit left to comfort us, but also to guide us and show us the way. We acknowledge your son, Jesus, who was our way to access you, who died on a cross for us and um, just redeemed us and continues to do just that. And so we just acknowledge your holy triune presence. And God, we just come to you now and we thank you. We surrender our, our thanks and our gratitude to you because we know that with two years of a pandemic and with so many people that we've lost, that life at this point is truly a miracle. It has always been, but we get to actually see how precious life is in this season. And so just the ability to be present today and to breathe and walk and talk and see and feel is just a gift. And so we just wanna thank you so much for that. And God, I just pray for everyone listening and watching and leading um, that we would just remember you. In your word in Psalm 27, you talk about, David talks about, everything in the world being crazy and people warring against him and attacking him. And he doesn't ask for you to save him out of that. What he asks instead is that he dwells with you and gazes at your glory. And it's because David did what we should do today. It's remember you, remember you in the chaos, remember you when everything seems to be going wrong And all that we desire in that remembrance is just to dwell in your house. 
and gaze at your beauty and your glory. And so God, would we be gazers that just locks eyes with you and remembers that you remember and gaze right back at us. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So good. So good. Thank you again, Tony, for being up here. I am absolutely just blown away by your um, devotion to the Lord. And it is very challenging. It's convicting. And we're just so grateful for your time. So I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening to Wild Lexi How. I hope that you have been encouraged, that you've taken some notes, that you um, would take this moment after you click off to go and spend time with the Lord and confess anything that is not of you know him in you or just to draw closer to him but i pray this has been encouraging i love you guys so so much and i will see y'all in the next episode bye guys Thank you guys so much for listening to Lava Lexi How. I hope today has been so fun for you to listen to the conversation today. I'm absolutely grateful to chat with you guys each and every month, sitting with special guests, or we just talk one-on-one -on -one about whatever the Lord has put on my heart. And I'm just grateful that you get to be a part of it and that I get to be a part of your life, which is so special and unique to the Lord. And I'm just grateful for you. So I hope that this has been an incredible encouragement to you. If you have not already gotten your copy of my book, Dear Broken Girl, you can get that on Amazon. Now, if you want a signed copy of my book, you can simply send me a message on my Instagram account at Dear Broken Girl or my Facebook account at Dear Broken Girl and let me know you want a signed copy. Be sure to get Dear Broken Girl for yourself, for your mama, for your friends, for your family, and even for a stranger. This book is to teach and remind you of your worth in Jesus. And I just want you to be equipped in what he's already called you to and to be empowered to do the things that he has set for you. So that is Dear Broken Girl. Please be sure to get your copy. Um, also, I want to let you guys know about my new podcast called Truth Be Told. It is found on YouTube, on Apple, on Spotify, and a lot of other platforms for you to go and check out. It is a conversation that happens each and every other Tuesday, along with some bonus episodes that I have throughout the month. And I just want you guys to be a part of that movement, that conversation, and just what the Lord is doing. So head over to the YouTube channel, head over to the podcast on different streaming platforms and listen to those conversations and be sure to subscribe to that as well. Um, I'm just grateful for you guys. And and I am so excited to take this journey with you. But before I let you leave, can I pray over you? Father, I'm thankful for those who are listening to my, me right now. I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would comfort them. I pray that you would guide them. I pray that you would give them clarity and, and just hope for the things that you have for them. Would you use them for your glory? Would you bless them for their good? And would you let them know how loved they are by you? You are good. You are holy. And we are just so thankful to be loved by you, Jesus. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. Amen.